in this episode guys today we're going to do a little pitch roof i don't do too many shingles on this channel but today's the day guys we're going to film this one there's three layers of shingles on here so we're going to strip them all off and then at some point we got to remove this chimney and frame up the roof around it but all in due time let's get to the serving part of this process because that's going to be the hardest part to get this all out of here let's talk quickly about what to do when stripping a pitch roof what's the first step the first step for me is always start a hole so i take a hammer and i start a hole and then i start cleaning the edge because right now we don't have any tarp set on the ground here right so we have some debris on the ground but it's going to minimize the debris if you carefully strip the outside edge and then we got to strip the top all the way back and strip the sides that way we have the body to strip and then we can push everything just straight onto the deck with the tarps now that's the cleanest way i found to do it your mileage may vary if you're a roofer watching this you probably have a different way and i'm interested to hear that My plan changed a little bit. I was expecting just to throw all the shingles down like I did the last bit, just piling everything there. But I was so afraid of the weight because there are four layers of roofing on this roof. So what that means is that there's a lot of weight. And if you guys have seen anything online about decks collapsing, I don't want this to be my story. So I only put maybe from, let's say here on, I probably put all that onto the deck and the rest of it I have it in bags behind me so there's like 50 bags of garbage and that's tons and tons of material so this whole building is like so much lighter right now now that the roof has been completely stripped of all the shingles it's time to go around and strip everything else that could be in the way that means satellite dishes anything attached to the roof that gotta go any pipes that don't work anymore and for us today we need to get rid of this chimney because it's in the way and it's not being used anymore so i'm going to start dismantling it nicely and carefully and i'm going to throw it down very very gently but i'm not going to do it in one piece because if i did that well that would destroy the deck or the roof because it's very heavy i'm having the hardest time of my life right here because well, what I thought was that it was gonna be hollow concrete block, but it turns out that it's very not hollow and that the concrete block, I guess, didn't have centers back in the day. They pour the concrete into the center with rocks. And so it's a solid all the way through chimney. And so, yeah, that's uh, kind of shitty. So now I'm a little bit stuck here. So I called Sal and he's bringing me a gas saw. So once we get the gas saw, we're going to be able to just to gas saw it into pieces. The first thing I need to do before laying the base sheet is to go back through and nail off any of the boards that look like they're loose. So I'll probably put a couple nails in each board just because sometimes they pull out while I'm stripping the roof and we don't want the boards to pop up and like basically burst through or start warping through the shingles and then causing issues later on down the road. <laughs> One thing you gotta know before we start is what kind of underlayment we're gonna use because we're gonna use two different kinds of underlayment. One's gonna be an ice and water shield and the other one is gonna be a synthetic uh, felt or synthetic base sheet. So ice and water has to be used at three feet at the bottom of the roof. For That's a general rule of thumb. You have to install it so when the ice builds up, it doesn't leak back into the building. So be, when you put a nail through it, it actually self seals around it so you don't get leaks. Now that's for ice dams. Now for the rest of the roof, we have to use a synthetic or a, a regular, underlayment they used to use tar paper for many many years and that works pretty well but since times have kind of evolved and synthetics have become pretty good and tar paper has kind of like fell out of favor because it kind of like gets wavy if you leave it overnight for a couple of days it'll get really bumpy and wavy now i prefer synthetic i think they leak less and they're a little bit more durable for walking they're tear resistant today we're using the pro armor synthetic underlayment from owens corning this one's pretty good i've used it before and i like it keeps the water out. We one time had a whole entire roof covered up with it. It rained overnight, nothing happened. So I gotta say it's pretty good. So let's start from one side of the roof, start laying it out. We're gonna get this whole roof covered up. But since we still have this chimney here, we have to think of now we're gonna skip our, our ice and water shield for now because once it comes out, I gotta fix the roof. I gotta fix everything. So what I'm gonna do is first install the top here while I'm waiting for that gas saw to show up so I can cut that thing apart. <laughs> Oh, 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 
let's talk quickly before I forget about what we're using to secure the base sheet down with. Now I'm using this cap nailer. It's called a Stinger CN100. And if I can open this, it has little caps in there that self feed with little tiny one inch nails. This is what the box looked like if you're gonna buy them yourself. That's what you gotta get for this gun. Now this works really, really well. It holds it nice and tight. But if you're on a budget, you're gonna do your own roof, which I highly don't suggest doing just because of the risk. Um, you can always just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they sell packs of 100 that you can hand nail. Comes with a cap of the nail already installed in each other and you just nail it on. Hey, gas all finally showed up. You can't tell that I'm not super pumped to cut this. I hate cutting with a gas saw. It gets my hair dirty because the concrete dust is pretty fucking nasty. I finally got that chimney cut out. Holy shit, that was hard. So it's finally down. And now it's time for me to patch in the plywood. That way I can transition it for the night, put the drip edge on and get the ice and water shield on. But that's what it looks like so far. And that's what the mess I've made down there. So clean up on aisle five, right? Next thing I gotta do is install some plywood. I'm gonna cut back a couple bays, line it up, put it in. And then I can base sheet. Well, drip edge, then base sheet. for drip edges and here's what you need to know about drips and rakes the reason why we have this profile is because this is going to hang over a little bit more into our gutter and shed the water straight into the gutter so it does a better job than a rake edge which looks like i'll get one out for you guys a rake, a rake edge looks like this and it just looks cleaner on the outside of the building so drips go on the bottom rakes go on the sides that's how it works let's get into installing those bad boys that way you get the base sheet on Let me quickly explain how we install the base sheet or the self-adhered base sheet because, you know, I see people mess this up a lot whenever they do like new construction or they do like they redo a house or something and they're redoing the roof. So I always install the base sheet after I put the bottom of the drip edge on. The reason I do that is because I want the water to flow completely over. And so the water hits here, obviously it runs down and it doesn't get caught in that drip edge and then run behind the gutter when it freezes. So that's the reason why I do it that way. It's the best way to do it. Um, I've actually seen a lot of leaks inside of houses whenever there's no overhangs on the house because they installed the drip edge on the wrong side of the base sheet and that can be a problem. Now, my rake edge, I put it on top of the base sheet because for me, I like it when, the, if I'm gonna leave it overnight to have that rake edge hold the side of the base sheet down, that way it doesn't blow up in the middle of the night and leak when it's raining. So. That's the reason I put it on the outside, but uh, the bottom one definitely needs to be on top just for uh, just to keep the water from coming in, but the sides are not as important. Now that the base sheet is fully installed, it's time for us to put on the starters. And this is what a starter looks like. There's like a gooey strip on the starter, so they're six and a half inches, and we're going to put the starters out about a half inch on the outside of the roof. That way it sheds the water even further. First thing we're gonna do is put our first piece. It's gonna be our full shingle. So we're gonna line it up right with our starter, just like that. Okay, nice and easy. We're gonna put one nail here, two there, two there, and one here. Okay, now we're gonna go for our second shingle. We're gonna line that up with the outside of our starter, just like so. We're gonna double check to make sure that lines up right there. The beginning is the most important because that dictates how the entire roof is gonna lay out. So we're gonna go one, two, 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 two. And one again. Oh, I missed it. Because the camera's in my way. Okay, same thing again. We're gonna take our another shingle. We're gonna lay that right in place. Right with the, level with the starter. Nice with the reveal. One, one, two, one, two, and one. Okay, now it's now for time for this one. Put this one right here. And then we're gonna line that up with the ooh, I can't see shit. There we go. Alright, here we go. One. Okay. Put 
put one right here. Just like that. We're gonna go ahead and put our last part of our, what's, what I like to call a book. We'll line it up like so. Beautiful. Okay. So, that is how you lay out the beginning of your book. The next thing we need to do is continue on with full shingles now that we've started our pattern. The way I ensure that that the joints don't line up, because if I started with a shingle, right? Let's say I just put another shingle. Let's say I threw down the shingle and I put it right here, right? And I covered up those nails, just like that. I've seen people do this before, by the way, right? Well, then in this gap, we'd come right here and we'd hit a nail and we hit a gap. So we'd actually have, we'd only be relying on the base sheet to keep us waterproof. And that's, I don't like doing that. It's terrible and the sun can get through and actually damage the base sheet too. And then, well, you're shit out of luck. The first part of this sequence to make sure the roof doesn't leak is to put our first full shingle because we have to cover up our six and a half inch piece right here. So our first piece goes right here, right? We line it up. Obviously these are the exposure lines. That's how you know you have to be dead on there. So let's say we line this one up, right? That one's lined up pretty good, okay. Now our next shingle has to be six and a half inches smaller than the original shingle. So that's gonna go like right there and we're gonna nail that on. And then from there, what we need to do is put one that's gonna be 13 inches smaller. So we're gonna put that 13 inch piece just like so, nail it on. Once that's nailed on, we're gonna take a, another piece that's gonna be 19 and a half inches long. And that's gonna be put right there as well. Perfect. Then we're gonna go to our 13 inch piece, which is right there. And we're gonna nail, basically we're gonna nail right here, two nails there, two nails there, and two there. Avoiding that. Now we're gonna take our six and a half inch piece and that's gonna be the finisher right there. So that's gonna be there. And then we're gonna go with our next sequence. But now that we've started that step pattern, all we need to do now is continue with full shingles and they, none of the joints will line up. Now, my shooting process is gonna be just like this. So my next shingle is gonna fall somewhere here. So I have one nail there, two, two, and one. So my next shingle is gonna fall somewhere here. So there's no way for the water to get into the building. So let me throw a full shingle right there. And this one's gonna line up right there somewhere. Look how perfect that is. That's perfect. Can't beat that. So that lines up just like so. I nail it on. I take another full shingle. And this gives us that overlapping pattern to work very quickly. And then that will get nailed on like so. And that stepping process will happen all the way through the roof. And that is how you shingle a roof. Well, that's how the Owens Corning way of shingling a roof. There's many different ways, but that's what the uh, Owens Corning directions are on the back of the package. <laughs> you just gotta make sure everything is staggered. And that's how you do it. <laughs> talk to you guys about my shingling. Now I know I'm a very slow shingler. I know that. I'm pretty accurate. I like how I shingle, but I could always be a lot quicker. If someone has some quick tips to make me quicker and better, I'm all ears. Post it down in the comments. Let me know if you know. If you don't know, that's okay too. Here's how you cut a book. We're gonna take a full shingle. We're gonna leave it right there. We're gonna take another full shingle and we're going to cut it at six and a half inches. So just like that. And then we're gonna put this piece right here next to there, but this six and a half inch piece, don't throw it away because you're gonna need it. Now, we're going to take a, another shingle, another full shingle, we cut it at 
13 inches right here, just like that. Take the big piece, put it on the stack, and then save that 13 inch piece. Now, next thing we need to do is cut another one at 19 and a half inches right there. And that's it. So we got that. Now you're gonna take your 13 inch piece, throw it on top, and your six and a half inch piece. Just like that. Okay. And that's how you cut a book. So on and so forth. You got the picture. Let's roll to the time lapse. It's raining and the sun is out all at the same time. We got clear blue skies and dark skies all in one, one go around. That's what the roof looks like now. That's what it looks like finished. I just gotta put some kind of a metal cap up there to kind of like finish it off because I gotta make it look nice at the same time. So that's it for this little shingle video, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, over now, boys.